Welcome to this presentation on DryWorks Express, where we're going to reuse some existing designs to create variations based on a theme. So if we just look at SolidWorks and launch DryWorks Express from the Tools menu, we can start off by deciding where we're going to store the information about the new files that we're going to create. So we're going to store this in a database. It's going to be called Mobile Gantry Example. And the first thing it's going to do once we've selected a database is ask us which models we want to work on. We don't have any in there already because it's a new database and we haven't uh, got a model open. So the only alternative it gives us is to browse for a new one. It's kind enough to open that up for us in the background and give us an example of the feature tree, uh, the models within there that we need to create. And here all we're going to do is select which models we want to control. We're going to select both of them, both the leg and the beam assembly. Hitting next now allows us to capture things about these components so that we can decide what needs to change every time we create a new one. So if we have a look at the universal beam, just simply clicking on it opens it. If we hit add, then DriveX Express goes down into the feature manager where we can start selecting dimensions. So let's go for the length and let's give it a name rather than being D1 at right end. Let's call it beam length. Kind of makes more sense. Another dimension that we may want to change on here is the height of the beam itself. Now that may depend on what load it's carrying, so we may want to enter that in later, but for now, all we're saying is that beam height wants to change as well. So those are the only two dimensions within this beam that we want to change every time we create a new beam. So now let's now have a look at the leg. Clicking on the leg and hitting add, again takes us back into the feature manager for our heads up design. And we can now select the dimensions and features we want to control. So an obvious one here would be the overall height. So rather than D2 at lower layout, let's call it leg height. As well as the leg height, we may want to be able to drive the overlap so that we ensure that our leg is structurally sound and always going to stay in the right place. And let's give that a name of minimum overlap. As well as selecting dimensions, we can also pick some features. So we have this inner diagonal feature here that again we can capture within DriveWorks Express so that we can control the state of it, either whether it's suppressed, unsuppressed or deleted later on down the line. Hitting finish again, we've completed our capture of dimensions and features. So let's look at some of the other things that we can do here for the top level we have three custom properties. So all we're saying here is either one at once or all together. Yes, we want to be able to control these as well. So that every time we fill out a form, we get a new one. Those custom properties may go through onto a drawing border. We have a drawing we've created already of our original mobile gantry. So let's capture that. So every time we get a new top level, we'll get a new drawing as well. As well as doing that for the top level, we can also do that for the components. So the leg already has a drawing. So we're going to select that. And the universal beam has a drawing as well, so let's quickly select that. And all we're saying here is, every time we create a new component, let's create a new drawing to go with it as well, so that we don't have to. The final thing we can control in our models is the configuration. So we can actually switch existing configurations, or between existing configurations, every time we create some new models. The next thing we need to do in DriveX Express is create a form, something for somebody to fill in to be able to design a new mobile gantry. So if we have something like a project number, we'll do that as a text box, make it required. Then we can go on and add more form controls for the users to fill in. So the next one is we might want to find out the customer name so that we can take that all the way through onto a drawing border. The next thing we might want to do is decide who drew this. So let's have a control called drawn by. This time, let's not go for a text box. Let's go for a, a drop down value. And let's just type in our names in case we've forgotten them or don't know how to spell our own names. So we've gone for Bob, Scott, and Vicky. And then we hit next. And let's add some more uh, inputs. The next one may be a drop down as well. So let's add something, let's call it safe working load because that's the type of input that we may want. 
Again, let's make it a drop down so we're not having to type in specific values. And let's give the user three options, 500 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms, and 1,500 kilograms. And we're going to make this required. So we've only two more to do, and this is now about the dimensions of our mobile gantry. So let's create another input called opening height. This time we're going to make it a spin button where we can have a minimum and maximum value and an increment between them. So let's add a minimum value of, say, 1,500 millimetres, a maximum value of 2,500, and an increment of 50. So we're really defining what the user can enter when they decide they want a new mobile gantry. There's one more to go. So let's create another one called opening width. This time, let's make it a numeric text box to allow the user to enter any value they want between 1,400, 1,500, and let's go for 4,000. And you'll notice that they stay a different color until we've got some good values, until the maximum is greater than the minimum. And we can reorder these so that our form looks better or flows better, or we ask the, for the information in the right order. Let's just have a quick test to make sure that all our drop downs have the right values and that our spin button works. We could set some defaults here if we wanted, or just clear it. And now comes the bit where we glue it all together. We have the information we want to drive and we have our form. So we need some rules. The rules will take the information we have on the form and control the models in that way. So first of all, let's work on the file names because DriveX Express is going to create unique files for us based on rules. We need a rule for the file name. We can view these either in a list or in a tree, just double clicking on each rule that we need to build. In this particular case, we're going to select the mobile gantry and hit next. We're now prompted to enter a rule. The rules that DriveX Express uses all Excel syntax, so it should be nice and familiar. All of the inputs that we had for the form, we've added to a drop down there, so you can select project number, which is going to be our unique identifier for the top level. The universal beam is going to be slightly different. We're going to get DriveX Express to learn as it goes along. So let's involve some of the dimensions and feature values in the file name. So we're going to string some text together. So the opening width is a variable that comes from our form. And then we're going to put the word wide and then a dash. And then the safe working load that we select from our drop down and the text safe working load. So the result of that will be a file name that means something that tells us what it is. If we hit next, we've just got the one more to do, which is the leg. And we'll keep this one simple. Again, it's going to be based on some of the features or dimensions that drive it. So the opening height, and we're going to string some text together. And it uses whatever the opening height is and the word high. So that's it now for the file names. If we hit next, we go back to the rules summary. So we can say, let's build some configuration rules. We'll just uncheck the file name rules first. And we only have one to build, which is the configuration of the universal beam. This universal beam already has three configurations in it which are 500 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms, and 1,500. So it's a straight mapping from the input that we type. We have the three custom properties that we wanted to drive. Again, these are straightforward mappings. So whatever we select from the drawn by dropdown, let's pass that through. The safe working load, whatever we select from the safe working load dropdown, let's pass that through as well. And finally, the custom property that is project, Let's just take that straight from the project number that we enter on the form. So there's just the dimensions and the features to go. So let's do the dimensions first. So selecting dimensions there and clicking next. We have the four dimensions that we captured. The leg height is fairly straightforward. Let's just go for the opening height and click next. That then disappears from our list and we can now do the minimum overlap. We're going to do some maths here. We're going to create an equation, a rule, that says, let's take the overall height and divide it by 10. And then let's add 100 millimeters on that for good measure, just so that it's nice and stable. So if we pick the opening height, divide it by 10, put another bracket on, and add 100. Simple maths using Excel syntax that should be nice and familiar. 
The beam length is fairly straightforward. The model's been created in such a way that the actual opening width is driven by the planes. So we have a straight mapping to the dimension opening width. And for the beam height, now this may require some logic. So if the beam height, if the safe working load is a certain value, then let's make it one height. If not, let's make it another height. So let's do an if rule, and we'll say if the safe working load equals 500 kilograms, then let's go for 200 millimeters. And anything else, let's go for 250. Clicking next again, we'll see that we all of the dimension rules are complete. So there's just one more rule to build, which is the feature rule. And what we're going to do is, dependent on certain values, we're going to suppress on or unsuppress this feature. So again, we'll do some more logic, another if statement, and this time we'll base it on the opening width. So if the opening width is greater than a certain value, in this case 2,000 millimeters, then let's suppress it. If not, let's unsuppress it. Now you'll notice there that our, in our recent box, we had some quick text. We can change that quick text, add in our favorite words, words that we use uh, a lot. Um, we can also just go in through the options, do some maths and do some other logic. So that rule's complete, we hit next now. And rather than going back to the rules summary because all of our rules complete, we presented with the form. And this is the final result. So I now have a form that I can fill in I can enter a project number. The only rule on that was that I had to enter a project number. The same for the customer name. The drone by was a drop down, so we'll give Scott the credit for this one. Let's select 500 kilograms. Let's put in an opening width that was between our two values. You'll notice that the next button is grayed out until I have valid input here. As soon as I have, then I can hit next. But before we do that, let's just change the opening height in increments of 50 as we discussed. And let's fill out the form. We'll just move that out the way a bit so we can see everything happening in the background. So it's created as a brand new leg with the naming that we asked it to. It's created a drawing for it based on the master, again, because we asked it to. It's created as a new beam with the correct file name. It's changed the configuration of it. It's created as a new drawing to go with that beam. And then it's created as an assembly. It's put the new components in that assembly and rebuilt that and created a drawing at the same time as well as populating the drawing border through the custom properties. You'll see that we have a report at the end there telling us exactly what went on. You'll see that the safe working load has changed. And if we just drill down into these models, let's just drill down into the universal beam. And then the, the leg and you'll see that the inner diagonal has disappeared. And there we have it. We can fill out that form time and time again to create new variations of our mobile gantry. Thank you very much for your time.